welcome everybody to Let's Talk Dendrobium Tetragonum. Right now, we are looking at the freshest bloom of a second flush that this orchid has produced in the year of 2020. It is now mid-May. And this is a phenomenal, phenomenal orchid. So I want to go into it with a lot more detail than I normally would while geeking out over an orchid because I find this a remarkable, beautiful, beautiful orchid to have in a collection. Yes, the sun is blinding me. I'm gonna try and keep everything on focus, but let me just take advantage of this blooming to introduce you to Dendrobium tetragonum. This is variety Giganteum and its growth habit when it blooms because I'm going to then save this clip and you will shortly see how it actually grows. It's phenomenal. So I hope that I get it right and that you enjoy the video. But back to the blooms while we have them. You can see here, this bloom is already starting to fade because of the heat. Normally these blooms can last three and a half to four weeks, all of them. But because it's the hotter time of year, they are fading much, much quicker. Understandably so. But there's something phenomenal about this because this Dendrobium tetragonum giganteum has already bloomed. In the first flush of this year, I had 13 blooms, which is not a mean feat, considering that I only have one, two, three, four, five, six growths that would make any sense regarding blooming. I don't count these two little seedling ones here. And that's why I so absolutely adore this orchid because it's gonna do it again and again on the same apex. You see here, there's still more coming. And for me, that was the timing was perfect to film this blooming and just keep the clip aside until we can watch its growth pattern. But it's bloomed here before. It's going to do it again with two more. And in this blooming, I've uh, already lost two, two blooms. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight blooms on a second flush. And all you have it is just sitting around, not taking up any space whatsoever. I love this. This, this is something that I find absolutely remarkable. The generosity, the abundance on these spindly little canes. There is no sign of new, new growth at all, and there won't be until it stops blooming. And I will document that because it's remarkable what they do when they start growing. So I grow mine just in lava rock. It's the small lava rock. And it is in a semi-hydro setup. That's all it is. I pour water through it every once in a while. Of course, right now it's getting fertilizer again, but when it is not growing, when this blooming finishes, it'll sit there again for a couple of months and do absolutely nothing like it did between my previous blooming and this one. It's just there. And then all I give it is a little bit of RO water every once in a while, and sometimes some seaweed because that's what's included for the others who require seaweed and it gets a bit of that as well, but no fertilizer. When it started to push out buds like this again, I was all guns blazing and boom, back to fertilizing. And I don't make a difference between who needs what, they all get 300, 300 ppm of MSU fertilizer in my case. So right now, I just wanted to show you these gorgeous, gorgeous, funky looking blooms while we have them. And there's one thing I want to mention because the rest is just going to be, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, is the fragrance. My first two times that it had bloomed, it smelled of aluminum being cut on a building site. It's that pungent, acrid smell in your nose. I don't mind that smell personally, but it can be a bit much. The, this blooming right here, the first time I ever have it, smelling of jasmine with 
a hint of aluminum being cut on the building site. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's a, a, it's a fragrance combination I never thought would work, but it does. So it's quite intense when you're close up, but it won't fill a room. And it lives outside for the time being. Now, while it is not in bloom and doing nothing, I have it in dappled shade. Sometimes it gets blasted with direct sun and not just because I'm filming it, but because of the angle of where it is stood. Even while it's resting, so to speak, or not doing anything, it gets direct sun for at least three, four hours a day. It can be midday sun, it can be morning sun, it can be evening sun. I don't differentiate because this little guy gets moved around quite a lot um, because of the space issue and he just fits in perfectly into the little nooks and crannies. But direct sun, not a problem. No issues on the leaves and I am in the southern Spain in the Mediterranean climate. When it is blooming, of course, I take it out of the sun because I want the blooms to last as long as possible. Once it starts growing again, it gets moved around again from direct sun into dappled shade, depending on what's going on on my shelves, but uh, it can handle it. It can take it, absolutely. So I'm going to leave this clip here right now. I hope that was a good introduction to Dendrobium tetragonum. Variety Giganteum. If I missed anything out, I will add them to the clips that will follow. Let me get this right and you will be amazed at how this Dendrobium can grow. So now Dendrobium tetragonum has finally stopped blooming. <laughs> It's been a busy bloom season, on and off, but while Tetragonum blooms, it doesn't do much of anything else. So for the time being now, it's finished all the blooming on all the apexes. For this season, we might get some more next year from the same apexes, but from my understanding, from my experience with this orchid, nothing is gonna happen for the next four to five weeks. And then we shall revisit this orchid and I will be documenting every day the, how the growths grow. Right now, as she's doing nothing, I have her in uh, bright shade, but really bright shade, and get some direct sun in the evenings. And now I'm only watering with RO water and sometimes a touch of seaweed inside. No fertilizer because she's not doing anything. And we're back on the 14th of July. Quite surprised, but I'm definitely not complaining and I'm all the more happier for it because Dendrobium tetragonum has been doing nothing since the last time I filmed it on the 24th of June. I estimated four to five weeks of no activity. It's been three and we have one new growth starting. So now it is up to me to get this right because I want to show you the speed at which these growths on Dendrobium tetragonum develop. And that's what basically the entire point of this video is, is to document the speed of growth. Unfortunately, I only have one to show for. Where's my other one? Come on, Dendrobium tetragonum, seriously. Last year, I grew these two. So these were last year's growths. And uh, it gave me the expectation of getting two again this year. So hello, wake up a little bit more, please. So I will be watching this every day and trying to document how fast this grows.
Well, here we are. And yes, I'm back yapping away. But I just hope that you enjoyed the visual of seeing what this Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum has as an attribute with regards to growing. I love it. I think I've said that enough. It's been four months since I started this video. To date, it's the longest video ever. <laughs> Time-wise, not so much, but duration of what I was trying to do, yes. But now you can see the growth has fully matured. I am astounded that it shot up another 10 centimeters. And I suppose I can forgive it for then just giving me one new growth. And in a way, considering how this video was structured, it's probably less confusing and less messy by focusing on just one new growth. So all in all, I guess it worked out well. But look at this. Isn't that amazing? That it can actually hold itself so tall, so high, it is not being supported. I'm not holding it in any other way. And yet, look at the base. It's so spindly, it looks delicate. It looks like nothing could sustain a growth like this. But here we are. Dendrobium tetragronum variety giganteum. My one new growth of the season, but it was the star of the show. And I have what is already the beginnings of a sheath, which won't do anything now until about January 2021. I really hope that I managed to capture what makes this orchid so special in my eyes. And I hope that you did enjoy it and I didn't get it wrong in trying to show you what this orchid is capable of doing and the speed at which it does it. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate having you here. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.